Hey everyone, it's LS, and this is the Patch 14.7 Notes Rundown, brought to you by FlyQuest here on the YouTube channel. Let's just get right into it. So it's 14.17. 14.18 is going to be the World's Patch, and also, at the time of you guys seeing this, if you don't know, I have the talk with Froxen and Freak coming up this week before LCS. It'll be at 4 a.m. KST. You might have seen the graphic on my Twitter or elsewhere. I'll probably end up reposting it anyway, in case just did not see it but anyways yeah matchmaking improvements recently we've seen a lot of player feedback around issues surrounding the balance of blue side red side and off roll balance this patch we're making changes to better match off rolls including matching secondaries as they were off rolls we've also made some improvements to make team versus team balance feel more fair and not repeatedly place the same players on the same team especially at the top of the ladder these changes didn't make it up in time for 14 16 but they're here for real this time that is awesome this is great just love this change okay reduce how large lp gaps could be between players okay this is all fine Leaving penalties on the table. We've discovered a bug in our lever detector system that resulted in some players not receiving the penalty that they should have received despite being identified as lever at the end of the game. Okay, this is all fine. Changes to ready check in order to address Q sniping and stream sniping behaviors that both involve abusing ready check to disrupt a game. We've implemented new penalties for declining ready check. Players will still be able to decline the occasional game if you otherwise occupied, but these new penalties will affect those repeatedly declining ready check in a short time frame. Penalties will start the queue, lockouts, and escalate to bans. A player, ooh, very nice, okay. Update to ranked restrictions worldwide. Having observed a decrease in report rates and jump in per game KDA for games with rank restricted players following the changes we made in the for and the Korea server in 1415, we are rolling out these changes to all Riot regions. Hello! Starting 1417, ranked restriction players will be able to return to ranked games only after winning three matches in quick play or draft pick. Cool. Infernal Cinder's adjustments. Infernal Cinder's spawn cadence, 2 to 3 every 14 seconds, 2 to 3 every 20 seconds. Infernal Cinder haste per stack, 0.6 to 0.1. This is a huge buff. This is a very big buff for allocating it. And I've talked about this before. There's some champions that benefit way more from Infernal Map than others. And this is mostly champions that they don't find themselves getting a ton of haste either in their build, right? They, maybe they get like 20 or something like that, but there is noticeable differences that they can start getting up to like 35, 40, 45, etc., and they can start stacking. One champion that you'll really notice this on, especially like if, if you're, you know, you're stacking dragons and stuff like that, that's very prominent in the jungle right now, is Shivana. Uh, on Infernal Cinder maps, getting all that ability haste when you have the Leandres into the Sojin, into the Death Cap, you're relying on Sojin primarily just for haste, and then being able to get all this extra haste, very good. Skarner, another champion that really loves the Infernal map, that's also very good inside of the jungle. It's just a bunch of champions. Okay. Aurora, our damage has decreased again. So this is taking massive hits. Now it's only losing 25 at rank one, so not the end of the world. However, it is losing 50 at rank two, and then it's losing 75 <laughs> at rank three. So very big nerfs to Aurora. I don't think that we're gonna see her in competitive. I've been very consistent with this. Yes, we have seen her in competitive, but the problem with Aurora is that very much like Ari, or well, different from Ari, she is dependent on her numbers. Her entire kit is married to her numbers. If her numbers aren't there, she cannot exist, unlike Ari, who has the charm. So with that being said, that is, uh, I, I think that this is bad news bears for Aurora. Ash, base health is decreased. It's going to be off by 30. Brand, passive burn damage per second and explosion damage capped against monsters. Passive blaze. Burn damage now is a cap at 30 per second to monster. Okay, Brand is dead in the jungle. Goodbye, Brand. I mean, he's still... You could still, in theory, pick him. There's just no point. He's going to be very down... He's going to be very far down the bis ladder now on, on jungle. And so this is going to mean that he's just ADC, mid, top, and he's everything but jungle now. Okay, Caitlyn, attack speed ratio increased, W cooldown is decreased. Attack speed ratio is going up by ever so slightly, and this is actually massive for Caitlyn, who is already a champion that I do think is actually viable and just no one's picking. And obviously, you do have to pick her in certain spots with certain team compositions. You have to be willing to design the comp around her. Massive buff. Double Yodel Snap Trap, just getting four seconds off it at rank one is actually quite huge. So I, I, I think this is also actually quite a noticeable change. So four seconds off at rank one, and then two seconds off at max rank. Totally fine. Ezreal base CD is decreased by two. Don't care. Graves, Q decreased at higher ranks and damage is increased. Okay, so here is the thing. Graves has gotten a lot of direct buffs and indirect buffs. There is a really good chance Lane Graves now returns. Graves is doing poorly at his current tuning, and we'd like to fix that. We're back packing up the repeatability on his Q and giving it a bit more juice, even if he isn't snowballing, so that he can be a more reliable DPS source. Q, end of the line. 
cooldown. 13 to 7 to 13 to 6. Initial damage 45 to 105 plus 80% bonus AD to 45 to 125. So once you get to rank 2 and rank 3, you'll start noticing the damage effects and then 80% bonus AD. Maximum damage is also just going up. Uh, wow. Okay, so maximum damage 130 to 330% to oh plus 100 to 240 percent uh bonus ad to 130 to 350 plus 120 okay so very very nice changes here the other change i guess did not end up going through on him which is which is fine he's still he's still just getting a lot of a lot of aid katarina q damage has increased uh decreased sorry q bouncing blade so they they have uh i mean katarina is all over the place and i do feel really bad for all the cat mains on twitter that i have been seeing um, because Cat has ended up in a lot of patch notes. So it is a little bit weird. Now, I did also hear that apparently Riot August has commented that Katarina is artificially inflated because of her mains, but that the champion itself is actually fundamentally weak, but there's a balancing act that is happening primarily because of her one tricks. I don't know if that's actually true. I have not seen the clip. I was just told that this is something that he said after having talked to a Katarina main. So unfortunate situation cannon now i do think that she is competitively viable um cannon q damage is decreased uh okay so cannon is already a really bad champion i, I think that you're griefing when you pick cannon even as a counter pick I again i think there's better champions in the abyss ladder he's not strong enough to be a blind pick um he is a lane bully and he does have like some feel good items and stuff it just doesn't he he's too countered by exhaust as an item enchanters really ruin his day unless he gets the element of surprise and in modern day league of legends especially at the high end of the ladder it's really ridiculous to assume that you're going to get those like miracle cannon flanks they're just so rare and that's why you can appreciate them more when they actually do happen in competitive kindred q attack speed increased e damage is increased cooldown is decreased q dance of arrows so they're actually undoing some of kindred's nerfs so damage on Mounting Dread is going up massively. Now, this is an ability that you obviously put points into later on, uh, but it is getting 20% bonus AD flat, right? So, I mean, that's kind of nice. The cooldown on it is also being reduced later. And so with a, an ability haste build, with an ability haste build, this is actually going to be a little bit weird. I, I'll, I will talk about this with Griffin during the T1 versus Humble Life uh, playoff match in LCK during the co-stream. LeBlanc, Q damage decreased, W damage is decreased, Q Sigil of Malice, 70 to 170 plus 45% AP to 70 to 170 plus 40% AP. Okay, so the Sigil of Malice going down by 5%, Distortion is also going down by 5%, so she's just losing some AP off her combo. Again, feels really bad. LeBlanc's never going to come in except as a counter pick. I don't think that she's a competitively great champion. She doesn't have any flex potency. It just feels really bad. Lilia, damage cap to monsters decreased at higher levels. Passive, dream laden bow, 70 to 150 over three seconds, 70 to 100 over three seconds. Noticeable nerf to Lilia. It will actually affect her ridiculous clear speed. Um, now, if, if you go blue smite instead of green smite or something, you're still going to have the movement speed as you traverse the jungle. But yeah, I mean, it, it, it does so. I mean, all the junglers are just getting hit. Lissandra, Q damage increased, R slow increased at lower ranks. Q shard 80 to 200. 85% uh, AP to 80 to 220, so it's getting a flat 20 damage buff, and it's getting, five, you know, at rank 2, rank 3, etc. Um, you're going to have 5 and 10 damage, respectively. Now, I don't think that that affects her wave clear. I do not believe that this alters the way that she clears the wave, and so because of that, it does feel kind of fake, but in the late game team fight, she's probably getting about an extra 100 damage, would be the way that I would, I would guesstimate this. Uh, our frozen tomb slow, 30 to 75%, uh, 245 to 75%. So, you know, you, you lose uh, you lose tier 2 boots. Okay. Pike, base armor is decreased by 4. Definitely hurts. Uh, base armor being 47 is actually kind of... That's that's ridiculous. That's... Yeah, okay. Uh, Rumble, passive damage is decreased. Passive Junkyard Titan. 5 to 40 based on level. 25% AP. 6% target max health. To 5 to 40 based on level. Uh, plus 25% AP, plus 5% target max health. So 1% target max health. So uh, super early levels, um, you know, you're talking about 6 damage, and then eventually it'll go up to 10, and then, you know, um, yeah, I mean, okay. um, so 6 damage initially. Six, 6 to 7, 8, like during early laning phase is what you're looking at. Rise, Q damage increased, R cooldown is decreased. Overload, 70 to 150, 55% AP, 2% bonus mana, 75 to 155. So a very negligible buff. Like, yes, this is a spammable ability. It's very fake. The 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 biggest impact this actually have is in his early laning phase. It does nothing in the later stages of the game. Five, five flat damage on Rise when he's already going to be overkilling you most of the time doesn't do anything. In early laning phase, when he's weaving in his poke with his auto attacks, his W spam, his Q, etc., that's really where this is. 
realm warp getting reduced by half a minute it's nice doesn't really do anything i mean at rank 2 20 seconds etc 10 seconds final rank it's sort of whatever Senna. q heal in our shield ap ratio is decreased q piercing darkness 40 to 120 80 ap 40 percent bonus ad to 40 to 100 all right so she's losing a flat 20. Um, now at rank one and two, you lose five and 10 respectively. You're probably going to be losing about half a potion in laning phase. 60% AP is also going, okay. So yes, they are really tagging Senna's ability to heal. So what, what's going to end up probably happening here is we're going to get combinations of Senna. Um, and what I mean by that is we're probably going to have things with like Black Cleaver becoming a lot more prominent. And we're probably going to have things with like Solari becoming a lot more prominent rather than just the the Helia and uh, Moonstone. So we'll probably end up having something like Moonstone or yeah, probably something like Moonstone Solari uh, would be the new AP variant. Um, I could see just because obviously the Moonstone combination with the Solari ends up amplifying it that way. Um, now, obviously, she'll have less offensive potency, but still going to be fine. Seraphine, W shield decreased. The cooldown increased at higher levels. W surround sound shield, uh, 60 to 160, 20% um, AP to 60 to 140, um, plus 20% AP. Now, this is an ability that she does not get access to until way later on, especially if she's going to be support. She doesn't get it until way, way later on. Uh, cooldown 22 flat. Now, four seconds. That is painful wow that's painful really really hurts seraphine in every single roll okay silas w damage is decreased w kingslayer okay so silas is just in the dumps we're just gonna ignore this he's losing 10 percent ap uh, silas is an abomination right now they, they they don't seem to know how to make up their mind on him twisted fate q damage is increased 60 to 220 50 percent bonus ad 85 percent ap to 60 to 240 50 percent bonus uh ad and 85% AP, okay. Um, so Twisted Fate, I don't know if this actually alters his wave clear. I don't think that it does. Um, you know, you do always have to be a little bit careful when doing stuff with Twisted Fate. So uh, let's just, you know, keep that in mind. Okay. Varus has escaped pro jail, and despite his recent busts, he is still underperforming. This patch, we're playing up his gold scaling with bonus AD purchases to make sure he can scale reasonably well. Okay. So piercing arrow, 15 to 235. Um, okay, so th this is uh, this is the thing that is hurting uh, tank Varus, but it's buffing uh, lethality and AD Varus. Cool. Um, okay, great. Uh, Warmog's heart, total gold cost going up by 200, move speed bonus down by 5%, item's dead. Uh, Celestial Opposition, well, item is especially dead on supports. I mean, 200 extra gold and then you lose 5% uh, move speed. I, this item is totally dead. Item is totally dead. Stop building Warmog's. Celestial Opposition, slow 60%, 50% for 1.5 seconds, whatever. Absorb life. Okay, here we go. Levels 1 through 5, uh, 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 levels 1 to 5, 1 to 5 based on level to 1 to 2. Wow. We're adjusting the formula here. Wow. Okay. Three to seven. Wow. This. Wow. Low turner is pretty close to comparable and precision. I think Absorb Life is a rare pick for when you really need it instead of a default pick that wins your lane through sustain. This patch will making Absorb Life weak on average, meaning it should only come in when you really want to recoup help, especially late game. Late game. Whoever thinks about this rune late game, man. Who? Ain't nobody got time for that. No one has time at a 30 minute Baron standoff, okay? To just be like, yeah guys, hold on. I gotta go, I gotta go to the wave. I gotta get, uh, I gotta get 100 HP. Give me, give me a second. No one has time for this, what? What are we talking about, especially late game, what? Okay, cut down. We're walking back our 1411 buff to cut down because it no longer needs the extra post. As is now, is both strong and popular, great. Fleet footwork, similar to absorb life. Uh, movement speed 20% for 1.25 to 15% for one. Heal five to 125. Wow, they have annihilated. Uh, 80s in obviously mid lane. This is also a really big nerf to the wind shitters. And uh, yeah, I mean, all these changes are really good. Now, I will say that the absorb life does hurt Garen, who now because Chovy picked it, I'm no longer a complete uh, idiot by the logic of the public um, when, I, when I put him as a S counter tier pick mid lane. Uh, on 1410 public uh, tier list that I ended up doing with pro players and whatnot. Um, so, uh, you know, Garen is definitely nerfed uh, because of all that good jazz, but yeah, ADC is definitely hurt. And that is it for the patch. So, no real super big competitive changers. The only really big competitive change, I guess, is like Caitlyn. Caitlyn is definitely noticeable. And then potentially Kindred are the real winners of the patch. I mean, Senna getting brought down a little bit is is definitely noticeable. Um, Varus is also, you know, Varus is going to have like his lethality build now probably come back with ability haste spam and whatnot. And that is it.
that is it for 1417. So world's patch 1418. I'm very excited to see what they're going to end up doing. And then in addition to that, uh, I will have again, Freak and Froxen on stream this weekend to talk about the state of balance in League of Legends. Um, have a lot of questions to obviously ask and all that good jazz. And yeah, there's not really any changes to solo queue and whatnot. So if you guys just got the patron for 1416, it was one of the biggest updates that we've had because I did not update the solo queue list for four patches uh, because just nothing was going on inside of the patches and change lists. There's basically nothing that's going to change. So we're just going to probably wait for 1418. And that is it. Now let's talk about the one good skin on this patch. No, it's not any of the battle queens. It's this skin. Now, honestly... This guy looks like uh, the thing from Justice League. What was his name? His name was like, uh, you guys see it, right? I'm not like, I'm not totally crazy. Kind of looks like Steppenwolf, you know? All right, it's totally fine. Anyways, guys, that is it for the patch rundown. See you later.